Is Kabeth not feeling well enough to join? So, I think she was she's babysitting. babysitting. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm glad it's for a fun reason. But in the meantime, lightning courses through Peach's body for just a moment. You think you're sure you can see the shape of her skeleton inside um, there. As this happens, there is a pitch sound that begins to grow. And then the solid colors of everything in front of you separate the sound cracking glass. Something has changed. What do you do? Uh, Ava's shouting towards Peach. Peach, come here! C get off! Get out of the water! Yeah, Peach is scrambling to her feet if she can and, and aiming specifically for Doc and following Doc's voice if she needs to. What's everyone else doing? Uh, Casey sends a message to Esmond through the mind link. Uh, did that work? Is the door open? Okay. Message goes uh, out. Ishtalan. Ishtalan is yelling at the same time as Ava, um, and while Pete is in the midst scrambling out, get, girl, get out of there! And then she sees her come, like, pull into view from around the corner of this wall, and then hushes up, saying that this has already been done. And assessing look over her and then calls out, uh, probably both in the mind link and also just aloud. Um, well, that that nearly killed Peach. Great idea. Is meant it even open? And she's moving forward, to like up or kind of. I think she's gonna try and just look over there, getting some view of uh, this thing over there. Peach uh, scrambles to her feet. She kind of uh, she. Pats down her hair, it's all staticky, and, and pats down her skirt where it's like caught on fire a little. Uh, and then she uh, scrambles up onto the, the dais next to, uh, next to Doc. Yeah. Doc sort of is uh, pulling her a little bit towards her, trying to move her out of the light, actually, as well, just sort of towards a little bit further uh, to our east, towards the shadow. Uh, and so she's, you know, helping her move that direction. Then she uh, begins to sort of channel and uh, ca channel her energy to focus on healing, seeing the state that Peach is in right now, and uh, channels healing energy into uh, into Peach. Uh, the wounds around her, like the the frayed portions and the burnt s smell of skin that sort of seeped out probably from beneath the clothes from where it had touched, sort of all goes away and. Uh, with, with the closure of the wounds, also any of the pain that was associated with it. The hair is still a mess, though. And uh, I'll tell you how much to put on there in just a second. Very uh, brighter Frankenstein look. Um, Bane's eyes go wide, and he goes, The floor! The field was lightning! Peach will holler out from under Fox administrations. Yeah, it conducted that zap pretty good. As what the hell? Um, are, we've got actions for everyone, but all right. We need to do like the the opposite, the opposite thing. I'm gonna stay where. When we entered the room, the one closest to us lit up, right? No, not until Ishtalan approached it. Okay. Um, we, hmm. I'm going to move to the far side where it's like... Hmm. Proximity. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to stay on the tub. Safe zone. Um, but can I toss a little heel to Peach? Much obliged. She's still bloody even after Doc's ministrations. Oh no, she's probably she's probably not. One second. Eighteen. Oh, you're good. you're getting a lot more than that. Oh, all right, thanks. I was like, I mean, it's not nothing, Doc, but you know, you kind of put a nice bandage on it. All right. So, uh, channeling the energy, having focused 
again, having seen how what the state that uh, she was in, Doc cha over channels the energy in a way that's very taxing on her, but forces it into the magic. Instead of rolling the dice, you're going to get the max for uh, the fourth level cast of uh, Cure Wounds, which is going to be uh, 32 plus um, plus the uh, 16, is that right? Yeah, 32 plus 16 for 48. And then on top of that, you get an additional 15. So that gets to, uh, what is that? 50, 50, 63, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, 63 HP goes into uh, Peach. Peach uh, kind of stumbles upward. You can see the flesh like knitting back together on her neck and, and her cheek where it's been badly burnt uh, and kind of all heals up. Not perfectly, but now it looks like an old sunburn instead of like a, a bad, bad, fresh burn wound. Uh, Peach is still hurting, but no longer bloody. Thank you, Doc. I get this cool lightning burn underneath her skin. Now. Like a starting uh, head. Just a reminder, uh, just to make sure it's in there. Remember, the bonus healing only can only go to one target. Right, so you, if you do two abilities, they don't both. Okay. Oh, okay. So the second ability is just going to be, uh, instead of, it's going to be plus four? Is that right? Wait, 1d8. What did I roll on that, Chris? For the 15. Uh, uh, so. It looks like you rolled 1d8 plus, plus five plus six. Okay. So the plus five plus six would be the extra healing, I think? And so wisdom. Be, wisdom! You don't counts. add wisdom? I thought you wisdom. get your wisdom, you just don't get the bonus palm bonus. Okay. Healing. In that case, it would be less the six then, right? <laughs> you get zapped just a little bit more. Yeah. Is that right, Chris? So I rolled yeah. 1d8 and then plus five for wisdom, and then we take off the six modifier, which is the... Uh, yes. So it's back to a measly 57. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you so very much. That's, thank you. I will add that to my... I will fix my sheet up shortly. All right. Thanks, Chris. Um, so I believe that will... Even though I don't know the specific number. I believe that will make Keach no longer bloodied. So, all right, you would see that. That is correct. Peach is no longer bloody. I'm going to... Having still just... I'll, I'll toss a um, little two of the healing water that I have towards you. So that's 2d6. Yeah, it's still not going to go to worse, waste, girl. Don't worry. Oh, I you were... Yep. I got to double check my health. Plus seven. Um, my, my total isn't even close to that. But I do think I get a plus five. But, um, goodness. I think, I think we need to stay away from the, the light. I think that we need to, um, well, uh, do you think being invisible would help? I could try, I could test it out and be invisible. And she, um. No, stop. And, uh, Ishalan's kind of looking up, um, at the, is the puck in the middle of the room or in the ceiling or is it the front? I can't remember. Um, let me give you results of the, for all the first movements yet. So we completed round one. Um, as you move to different positions, the low, southernmost crystal has changed its light to pointing at Ishtalan instead of Keech. Um, there is another crackling pulse of lightning that goes throughout the water, harming no one. Um, Ishtalan, as you round that corner looking north towards where Ezin was, and as Casey, you send that message out into the ether, or Esmond. Um, no, wait. No, no, he's, he's not here. He wasn't here, was he? Wait, he was just here. Oh. And, uh, yeah, that's Ben as well. So is the 
Go ahead. Um, the the back is toward the front of the room by the tubs. Um, yeah, the 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 stone plaque is on the southern side of the room, basically between the pub, between the tubs and on the ceiling. I would just say, given her per- general perception, she could probably still read it from here. Um, yeah, I think it's fine with you guys. I think uh, as Aurea says that uh, I can go as a bullish so I'm, uh, it just says stop. And as she's looking over, not at Aurea, but up at the plaque in the ceiling. And she says, every other room has been for one person to solve, or at least to show the way. I don't, this probably should not be any different. And I think this one actually is just about me alone, not, not about me and, and Shalith. Um, and she's just going to move forward as far as she can. Round two, where is everyone else doing? Shalom's new. So are we just staying out of the water? She asked aloud and in her mind. Just hold here? Ixalan's got her own thing she's working on. I, I don't know. Sit here and fix up the next person who gets zapped by the stupid thing. Casey will follow uh, north in the room, and when he gets to this corner here, he again waves his hand and the water shapes around his feet. (laughs) And he turns to Ishala and says, show us the way then. I'll have to give me another couple of rounds. Yeah, Doc's going to go ahead and patch you up just one last time. Uh, Peach and herself, she helps defrizz her hair a small amount and uh, cast Cure Wounds. This time, just the first level. You guys resolve that healing. Uh, Any actions or movement from anyone else for round two? Uh, Peach, you're healed for another 21, and 19 goes back into Doc. So her, she looks a little healthier, too. And then, Peach um, looks better than she did when we walked in this room. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I think she's just going to stay there and sort of is looking in the direction towards uh, Araya and uh, their new friend, trying to see... Some, are beyond, beyond Peach's shoulder to sort of look at them as well, just to sort of make sure they're okay, keep them in sight, and uh, yeah, holds there. As you complete your movements, the northmost pillar <laughs> shines its light onto Ishalon. The western pillar shining its light onto Casey. The Southern pillar is also shining its light onto Ishtalan, and the eastmost pillar has gone out completely. It is not shining light with the people who are standing on the day on the on the mountain. Um, once again, there's a crack of lightning blue arcing through the water. Uh, it doesn't look like it's harming anyone. You can round three. Long glances over at Casey and says, Get out of the line of the light for a moment. I want to see what happens with this. And then she pulls a blanket out of her backpack, out of her bag, and then uh, drops it over the crystal. Basically, just kind of like reaches up over her head and settles it over to cover it like a birdcage. Yeah, it's easy to do. 
You drop it over in it. Um, you are able. Well, I'll give you results later. Is anyone else doing anything on this round? Yeah, Casey moved uh, a bit north and again moved the water away from his feet. Oh, sorry. Also, after that, she is going to move to like here so that she can't see and the other three crystals. Assuming that's where... Oh, let me check. Is she still in the light from this western one? Mm, you can kind of catch glimpses of it now and then, so it's possible that... Um, okay. She'll move over like one, one more then. Mm, you can... Right there, you're kind of catching glimpses of the eastern crystal. Well, it's less about my line of sight and more about is the light hitting me. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, the blanket dropped over the northernmost crystal. You can see that through the blankets, it is still shining. Um, but... It doesn't seem focused on you. It's just glowing. The southernmost crystal is still out, not shining on anyone. The western crystal has gone out and is shining on no one. The eastern crystal is shining at Estron. Okay. Um, Casey, just gonna move out of the way entirely then. Like to like here, I think. Maybe she'll talk back further if need be. I'll move that one more. When else doing it? Yeah, Casey will mirror on the opposite side. It calls out to Casey. Um, keep an eye on the door. Maybe this will do it. So you move to these no positions. Um, the northernmost crystal is still glowing beneath the blanket. Southernmost crystal is extinguished. The western crystal is extinguished, and the eastern crystal is extinguished. If nobody else is going to do anything, then um, it would probably take me like a couple of these rounds to go over there, grab the blanket, and move back. But that's her intention for the next couple rounds. Um, yeah, as long as no one... Well, as Ishtalan is going about doing that, um, just give me a quick glimpse of what the others are up to in, this, in these moments. No, except for Casey. Well, unless Casey wants to uh, We're standing on something. What is it again? We're like a pool or... It's, you know, um, large... Looks like pools of, of water, and they're warm. There's a slight heat coming off of them. Yeah, not having anything else to focus on. I think Doc's gonna study the pool a little bit, maybe take a small vial of it, actually, just for some swirl it around the little thing. Okay. She's yeah. also absolutely not being helpful to the people who are to the south, because she's not saying anything was happening. <laughs> um, yeah, you take a, a vial of water, and it seems, it's like, kind of, almost like milky with, like, thick minerals, like you've seen, um, like at the temple, for example. Uh, okay. Casey will Sing. uh let the others in the mind link know as isn't around anymore. You know that noise you heard? Yeah, I think as is off elsewhere now. And just like all the other times you realize you have some vestigial memory of some reason that Esmond's not there, but Wait, that makes perfect sense. He wouldn't be here, but then you also remember him being here just a moment ago. And you yeah, know... It's a, it's a shame. He would have loved this room. I know, but I get the feeling he's, you know, at a birthday party. Oh, birthday cakes are worried. I'm not sure why. 
and I feel the echo of emotional pain. Yeah, I feel like he's suffering, but also kind of loving it in a pseudo-masochistic way. You know? Hmm. Any more about us been different? Um, let's see. What's her at? She's honestly waiting for for uh, instructions because she's pretty sure that if she goes invisible that it can't sense her, but she doesn't want to go the way of Peach and get full-on electrocuted. Um, she's going to wait. Just, just let me know what, what you need me to do. Uh, the, the one down here is off. At your moment. Ishtalan, you've collected the blanket and moved it back to that position over on the eastern side. Is that correct? Yep. Well, I'm on it also. Oh, sorry. Um, as you're moving, the northmost crystal, as soon as you remove the blanket, it's still glowing, but it focuses its light onto you. Um, as you move away, it follows you until you're out of sight. As you pass the threshold on the right, or the gap on the right side, um, on the eastern side, the eastern crystal shines a light at you and follows you until you're behind the wall. Once you're out of sight of all of them, all of the all of the crystals extinguish and the door <laughs> opens. Is it pitch dark? Is it dark in here now at this point, or is it um just the sort of dim light so that people can see what's going on? Um. There's probably, yeah, there's the slightest, the slightest uh, dim light from the crystals themselves, just enough to tell where things are. Well, that did it. So if nobody is in the, with the light of any of these. How do we do that? Can you get through the door before it sees you? He says across the way, he's leaning against the wall, just totally relaxed. I should, I should mention, with the two of you being on that side, you certainly see that there are two spherical apparatus on the northern side of the room. That was going to be a max question. Like, what are, so what are these things in the north? Yeah, they seem to be looks like polished metal of some kind, just spheres, relatively featureless. They're not perfect mirrors, um, but they are slightly reflective. Wait, so they're concave lens is not spheres spheres oh, oh they are spheres okay and these um are these like the squares or the rectangles that are north of them um those look like more fa smaller fountains similar to those on the bottom on the south room. there are fountains on the north side too. they're just much smaller With the goal, check out that wall that's on your side, and she's gonna move over to this thing. Um, she wants to check out the fountain real quick first, see if there's anything. It looks like there's anything interesting or trap-wise in there. But before she turns her attention to the screen, but I think just for now, the the fountain. Okay. Yeah, the two of you move into position, and um, the western crystal shines. What's it, Casey? The eastern crystal shines. Point seven. Um, looking at the spheres, and I'm okay, so I'm assuming you're moving. Um, looking at the spheres, they seem to be relatively featureless. Um, just looking at them, the fountains themselves seem to be um, trickling water. Um, it looks at a glance, it appears to be clean. Um, does the door close? Uh, the door does close. Yeah, when the when the, the crystals shine, they. F How fast? Hmm, about as fast as the door might you might suspect it would. Come down. I think I can beat that door. You want to try it, be my guest. Hmm. 
do the spheres um can you, are they loose could you potentially like pick them up off of the pedestal or when you move your hand to touch the weight of it you know you realize that when you touch it um like a tingle goes through you and the hairs uh, maybe on the back of your arm stand on end and you hear a good sound of something moving maybe behind the ceiling behind the wall wait 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 no can you put your hands on your orb she puts down a bit and writes herself so that she's right side at this time puts her hands on the orb um, you touch yours as well you hear another <laughs> noise behind the stone those crystals are still shining at you nothing happens yeah it's definitely doing something but what did what did the inscription say again um can somebody down there read it out again? Uh, you do you go for it. <laughs> you can. I like Ava's voice. No, no, it's fine. You do it. The, the dwarven ones or the the. I'm really. I I can only sound out the dwarven phonetically. No, no the. Oh. The, Puzzle one. Two are one, and one are two. The same, yet not, and who are you? Drift away, return again. The water calls, and you descend. Breathe in deep, but take no breath. Death is life, and life is death. Those two eyes, they are the same. They see you. Who do you blame? Loss is gain, and gain is loss. What do you keep, and what do you toss? Left behind... And far too often, a half is gained and not forgotten. So these spheres are not capable of being moved from where they are? Um, yeah, now that you're touching yours, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's meant to be moved based on what it feels and trying to tug on it. Not to say you couldn't destroy it, but... Can you reach the sphere from those pools of water? Um, maybe. I mean, that'd be a, a bit of a stretch. You'd be like half out of the water, like maybe just your legs or feet would be in. Casey ducks behind the sphere as much as possible, keeping his hands on it, and sees if the light follows him and can use to shine on him. Yeah, the sphere is not quite enough, large enough for you to get completely behind it, and the crystal is still shining at you. What if, uh, no, God. Uh, Casey looks over Shil or Mishtalan and says, You know, Rhea can turn invisible. She yeah, sure. That's what I've been but, saying! But that doesn't do anything for the other one. Well, like, the, cri the crystals are the eyes! You, you have that blanket. It doesn't do anything. It's when it was over the thing. Even if it wasn't focused on anyone, the, it was still lit up. I mean, like, uh, over you. <laughs> she, she basically makes that exact expression. It's <laughs> sort of the... That's so incredibly... The... <sighs> and then she just gives, like, the deepest sigh and then put, tosses a blanket over herself. <laughs> Much like a Halloween ghost, <laughs> the blanket just sus is suspended there in the air, <laughs> sweating slightly. But like crystal is still still shining on it. It's definitely a puzzle for two, though. But what if what if you have to like mm, activate activate one and then not the other? Like you, you leap like leapfrog like the game of leapfrog when we were jumping over the sheep. Like, uh, it's a puzzle. It's a puzzle. So think of it like a puzzle, but a puzzle that's done by two. How deep are the pools here? Take a bath uh, at home. Uh, the ones on the northern side are much more shallow, and they seem to be trickling 
um, like they're more like fountains. Like, and you realize the ones on the southern side are kind of like baths, and the ones on the northern side are maybe like mountains that don't you drink out of. Calls out to the people south. Deep are those walls that you're standing on. Do they go down any further, or is it just the tub? Peach would look at Doc, but seeing as Doc is AFK, Patrick? Amos seeing as Doc pre is pre preoccupied looking. Preoccupied. Uh, Peach would look and see it clouded. I, I can't tell the depth, but I don't exactly want to stick my hand in. What if I get hit again? And last room there was tentacles. What? This place sucks. I'll find out. I mean, if ooh, um, who's next to me? Farron. Farron, if if I get electrocuted, pull me out, okay? I'm not really good with ropes, so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to just grab me, okay? All right, I'm gonna find out how deep the pool is. I'll keep an eye on you. Have you ever seen somebody get electrocuted? Like shocked? You, you, like just moment, like ten, ten or so seconds ago. <laughs> Erin was. She just, she like uh, steps into the pool. The warm, delightful bath. Is it going to shock her? I'm going to stick your foot into the water. No lightning courses through you. Oh, these baths are nice. She hops all the way in. How deep is it? Super deep? Um, Probably if you're sitting, well, if you're standing in it, it's just below, let's say, waist height. Oh, so it's approximately to my tail. Hmm. I thought not what I thought, maybe. Well, something that Araya said gave, gave me a thought. So if it's a puzzle meant to be doomed by... and to be completed by multiple folks or two of the folks, can't you all do some things where you just become multiples of yourselves? I feel like I saw Shalati do that half the time in battle. It looked like you were there with her, Ixalan, and Casey, I know I've seen four of you show up one time or again. There's only one of them. It isn't about me. Am I... Am I not the main character? What was this ability that you... You said... Like, you've said this before, that it looked like I was there. And can assure you it wasn't, but... So... Sometimes when Shalati was in battle... She would summon someone who she called Ixalan, and... It wasn't you, as we know you now, or as we knew you when you were younger, you, you know what I mean, but it wasn't her either, it was it was sort of like a, a mirror image, doppelganger, but not a, but just someone she was summoning by magic, it, she wasn't really there as much as Shalati would call her Ixalan. And she just sits down on the edge of this, uh... Actually, I think she just sits down on this ball. And she's like, just... Okay. Well... So she has two, and I kind of had two by... The reading of this, so would that make us... If we were both here, would that make it four, or... Also, Ixalan, don't... This is probably for you. This whole town that we've been in, it's... Made for the group of us who are actually here. Otherwise, we would have seen statues of Salinger and things. So this is you. This is meant for you, not for Shlotty. But that can you do something where you can double yourself up? There has not been a single indication of me here. Except for this thing, which could be either of us. Yeah, yes, there was, a, there was. There was a group of... Oh, there was a group of us statues around a campfire. It's. I know you and Shalati look a lot alike, but it was definitely you. Right? No, right? What do the balls, those things do? Can we even see those? Because I don't know if I can I see them from where I'm at. Me too. I think. I mean. You can, you can probably just barely make them out. 
Also, one of those lights is shining directly on me, so it's probably shining in the ball. What happens when you both touch the ball? Touch the balls together. No, we did that. I mean, at yeah, the same time? Touch we did that. No sparks. Well, there's something <laughs> about holding your breath, so maybe it's the water. Nothing was unlocked. There's something about holding your breath, and that's like a water thing. I mean, I was just about to to dunk my head into this fountain over here. Do it, yeah. I'm doing that. Just to double and check. You have does... to, Casey. It's for the puzzle. How long does this love take last? Ten minutes. It's not my room. Yeah, you're probably... Yeah, but... Chris is waiting for the moment when I fall into the water. Find out if that's zappy water. Does the light affect the orbs at all? If I get to, if I'm like behind it and then getting the light to shine like on the orb, mm, is it reflected no or have any? No visible difference. I mean, you can kind of see some reflection in the water, but like it doesn't seem um, okay. distinct. So these don't spin either, or that, like turning around or. Uh, yeah, when you try to light. like rotate it, it doesn't spin. But you do feel you do feel like. The hairs on the back of your arm stand on end as you when you touch it, right? And maybe some of your hair frizzes up a little bit. I mean, you can't like summon a version of Shalati, can you? Oh, seems like the riddle's calling for the both of you. Well, that's not fair. It's supposed to have been, let's like, be sort of precognitive of exactly who's going to be at the temple at the time. Is it supposed to be anything? We don't know anything what's going on here. And uh, at the at this point, she land, she moves over to the edge of this basin, just kind of the straddles, perches on the edge of it, squats down, pulls the hood up over her head, and then just dunks her head into the water. Thank you, head into the water. Of the fun. Yeah, there's no, there's no burning or electrical shock. Instead, it tastes clean. Kind of been early. She lifts her head out of the water. Uh, takes a breath. Lifts her head out. <laughs> coughs out of the water. This would probably be actually a really nice um, spa. If we could get rid of the. The lightning that keeps shocking everyone when you get. Who's to say uh, that this ain't this ain't meant to be a bathhouse? This is all, you know, insurance or end of the world preparations for the folks above, right? There was a whole cafeteria. There was a farm with food. You know, this probably was meant to be where folks could get clean and electrocuted. Would it be? Like a simple maze or something? Like, Casey, is there a route we could take where you can move a certain amount and hide in a corner somewhere and none of the things would see us? And then just like one person at a time, we could like move to the open door if they stay closed and no one would get shocked. I mean, I can make it through the door before it closes, but... I can. She's, she, actually, so after, before I do anything like that, she moves over to the spot right in front of the closed door. But as she's looking south toward this crystal, uh, is she within the light from here, or from the south, the southern crystal even? As you move there, the light of the northern crystal is still shining on you. However. Standing there, only the northern crystal shining on you. Wait, no, 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 no. Southern crystal shining on you as well. Well, I mean, I might be able to carry one small short person to a, a little pocket of darkness. Um, but you would have to find some way, or at least to these northern places where you can stand and be closer to the door. One at a time. Unfortunately, I think everyone who is here is short and limb. Um, well, I don't know about Fane. Fane, how much do you weigh? Um, 14 stones. The big stones, though. Uh, 
Uh, you could well, add some little or, stones too if you want to be more precise. And 13.5 pebbles. Yes. It's actually darkness. Can any of you make magical darkness? I can. I, I haven't had to yet, but I. I hold on. Wait, hold on. Let me double check. I mean, that might have been a Baldur's Gate spell. Hold on. A blanket didn't work, but maybe. And then if you make walls? Because these walls are not. Give me like a Fortnite. Okay. I can. Yeah, it's a tiefling thing. Yes, I can make darkness. You why? We... It's very seldom that we need darkness, though. I mean, it'll. You can't see through it. It's magical darkness. I mean, that's what I'm counting on. These it, crystals are seeing us. We want to stop that. This magical darkness versus magical light, which one wins? It depends on how strong they are. It's only going to be able to reach one, though. That might be all we need. No, because... That one over there, like to the south, is also um, shining on me. For some reason, it's got a really big range, even though it was a very big one. We came in from the south. Well, it's light. I think it's. I don't know. We should test the range. We should test the range of sensitivity of these little guys. I'm gonna move to this one and see if she can pull the crystals or like rotate them or anything. Yeah, as so you, you ground the crystal and try to pull it, try to rotate it. Um, yeah, again, you could potentially break it, but it doesn't seem to be intended to move. I mean, I could just th break it. No, we don't know if it might just stay on permanently. Mm. But we can't, I mean, surely there's got to be a way that we could, like, run 30 or 40 feet and, like, at a time and not be seen by the walls and get to the other side where you guys are. I just don't want to map oh, yeah. that I mean, out. I can, I can move the water from around your feet like Casey is doing for himself. Oh, I just yeah. have to do it one at a time. Oh, but once we're over the other side, is there anything for us to stand on so that we don't get shocked? There's a, a, these little drinking fountains. They're uh, s smaller, but well, and she kind of looks over at them and estimates how many people can actually stand in on around them. That would be more challenging. That would probably require re repeated dexterity and ability checks just to, like, be balanced. On the edge or just in the water? Like, if you just sat in the fountain? Oh, like, if you're just in the fountain. Um, yeah, you could potentially be in it. However, there are times when the excess is sloshing over and you're not yet sure you know what I mean like there are times when it's connected to the water on the floor it's just not consistent would we be out of the yes. way of the light there there's pockets up here then yes you would be out of I think that you could be out of the light or at least two people could be out of all the lights hang on the moment then she's I think she's gonna test these areas here See if uh, they send out any rays or anything. Mm -hmm. When you're on the southern side of that wall, like when you're right there, the northernmost crystal can see you. What about on this, these spots? Um, yeah, I'm going to say that one's safe. Yeah, let's do There's a few small pockets. Uh, do you see anything on your side, Casey? Yeah, there's a bit of space over here. But there's got to be a way to open the door permanently. What do those ball things do? It sounded like some kind of mechanical thingy happened. Like, are they pressure, or do you push them like a lever? No. Just put a hand on it. So, I mean, it seems like they have hands on them, 
and nobody is in sight, then... Oh! I... Ava, you have that, um... thingy that helps you with, uh, bandaging and sewing sometimes, right? Mm hmm Yeah. Like that physicator's uh, aid? Yeah, it's, a, it's sort of a third hand, a physicator's assistant. He's got different names. What about that one? Maybe. Here, do you want to... Well, I think there's maybe just enough space it, for anyone who wants to risk it. Um, there's a little bit of space here to, to, so you can at least see what's going on and we're not just shouting across the room at each other. Um, I don't know if I can make it there in one stride. No, I meant, um, uh, wait, hang on. I'm fine shouting. Uh, I, all right, I can, I can get you up here, I think. Um, and she is gonna... Trundle on south to get Ava and either pick her up and carry her north or shape water around her feet so that she can walk north without getting shot. Uh, as she's doing this, she's looking over at Peach and Araya. She's like, are you guys going to be okay? I'll put as long as I'm a blood walker, I guess. Araya is happily like just cleaning off road grime in the little pool. Honestly, we rolled straight from a no magic camping adventure into town and into the temple. They had like a rest in a little tiny hut. She's taking advantage. Yeah, we'll be fine. Take your time. Ben's watching. He's got, his, he's got his axe out and he's just watching the water really closely. <laughs> she looks over and says, do you want any soap? Hey. No, no, I, well, uh, yes, but no, no, just, this is better than nothing. Reached into her pack and pulled out a piece of, a little bar of soap. You're like, the happy farthest use. away, Bert. No, you're not. Oh, God, you're close. Oh, I just, I mean, this has probably taken, like, multiple of these lightning rounds. So, it's just, like, constant crackling electricity that keeps pulsing through all that they have to talk over. Watch the only way that these pools get warm is like when it connects to the shocking stuff. It's like, oh. <laughs> whatever, she's taking advantage. Uh, I'm just uh, I'm bemused and happy on behalf of Araya taking advantage of this because she knows how, how good it is to take a bath. Uh, oh, and a hot one, y'all. Mm. Hot mineral temple bath. This is the best. Her skin's going to be amazing. Um, yeah, she's nervously sort of, uh, I guess, adjusting to whatever position uh, Echelon is having her take to make this journey across. Oh, yeah, yeah. So please, uh, yeah, tell me a story as you scoop Ava up into your arms and float um, across to her side. Uh, so she essentially just waits until Ava has her arm over fireman style and then... Uh, I think she makes it okay, with the levitate. Oh, wait one second. I saw about you just before you can play. So you can you can do what you're gonna do. I'm just gonna do something as well. Um, I think given the extra passenger, she can't do her favorite new trick of uh, pushing herself really far up so that she can walk on the ceiling. Um, so she is going to instead kind of kick her way from wall to wall, sort of springboarding. Um, at one point, she actually uh, ends up using kicking off the crystal to go to like, from here to here to here sort of thing. Uh, and then about halfway through, she's, she's starting to get like, her arms are starting to get really um, weak or trembly. So she says, okay, wait one moment. And then shifts and then flings her over her shoulder so that she's doing the uh, head down <laughs> over the shoulder and kidnapping Carrie. Uh, uh, right before they left, uh, the boat, uh, Shaladi has a 
extra little spring in her step as uh, Ava slaps her on the butt with a little long strider as she's being carried over the shelf. Did you mean Echelon there, Doc? Yes, Echelon, sorry. Freudian? Yeah. I keep messing up the name. Yeah, more like you wished Lon. <laughs> um... Yeah, so before too long. And then, and with the ex, with this extra weight of another person, you are like slowly descending, but you mean, you know kick off the wall a little bit of an angle, and so you manage to stick off the water in this case. Um, yeah. So where do you where do you want to be moving to? Uh, I think she's just gonna take her to over to here, and then we'll set her on top of this fountain over there. <laughs> and then Amelia just like lands on the fountain as well as. Cause Jeez, you gotta work out more. It's like what, thirty seconds? <laughs> do you want to? Do you want to do it the other way around? And uh, she, like, she begins to take the boots off, or like she <laughs> mimes taking off the boots. I don't know. I don't think you could make it. She's joking as she starts to settle into this fountain. Are you, are Casey, you good? Oh, I think I said that right. It's Casey Winnie. Oh, here's. I can't beat the door. I can beat it. What's on the other side? Of course, we didn't see any sort of levers or anything on the other side, did we? Mm, yeah, seems to be similar to before. Probably a set of stairs that goes down. Wait, I wonder. Uh, Peach has one of those things. She just used this in uh, her room where she can just cross the space instantly, right? I wonder if she yeah. could go from one of these hidden pockets to the, behind the door. Mm, Ava's going to measure it out. <laughs> and then she's saying this aloud, right? Not in the mind link? Yeah, I think she's saying it aloud. She's not trying I to keep her voice so. down, though. It's yeah. not... It's not in the mind link, so I want to make sure I could hear this conversation. It's just a little too far, I think, if, like, where where would she have to be going from over there? And she points to... Well, what about where Casey's standing? That's much shorter, and I think that's still out of the way of all the lights. Oh, yeah, that might be... I mean, I, I think that's perfect. Peach, do you want to try again? I can do it if she can't or doesn't want to, but it sounded really hurt. So I don't know. It was yeah, pretty I, bad. Huh? It's I haven't done that kind of jump since yesterday, so I can do it. Well, looks like you're still gonna get of, another workout. I still sort of the feel like well, I was going to say we're missing something, but that's always the case, so uh Is uh, it safe to do? I don't really understand the math. Where am I running off to? So there's a spot. I mean, do you just want to come over here? There's another fountain on the other side we can show you better. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. And then I, I can misty step out of the whole room if we need to, right? Well, that's a hope. Something. Something also kind of worth mentioning for those of you who are using some sort of like shape water ability or something like that, that does take like an action or bonus action. So like you, you're technically only can move like five foot blocks kind of at a time. We're just kind of messing time. So that trap would actually be pretty slow. This is probably why she elected to just carry a bird across rather than, <laughs> than shape, her, shape water her across. Wait, we got to think about this though. All right. So, even if that happens, even if that works, and she makes it to the other side, right? The water, if it doesn't end at the door, if it goes down the stairs and there's a shock, she could still get shocked on the other side, even if she's on the other side of the door. I prefer not to do that again. Is there any dirt or um, stone or like, she's seen Casey do this mold earth thing before, right? I believe. Mm -hmm. You can so, move dirt, um, but not, not the stone up the floor. Okay. I think she is 
looking. I, she'll probably just ask. Casey, do you think you can do the thing with the dirt where you sort of raise like a lip so that it's contained in the room, like in front of the door? I mean, if there's enough loose dirt, I could. But not this what? stone. Glancing around, that's not the proper material. Mm, yeah. Probably not in this case, but... Uh, just observing and just looking at the, uh, much closer now, at the globe, uh, can you describe it a little bit more, just one more time, Chris? Yeah, it seems to be a, a relatively featureless metal globe. Um, presuming at some point that you reach out and touch it, you can feel like uh, yeah, like the hairs on the back of your kind of prickle up, like you feel like you're a little cold or uh, when, you, when you touch it. Mm. Well, there are two things that come to mind. We can try to have two people touch this just as an experiment and the other was didn't Shaladi when she had her um duplicate or whatever couldn't they switch places like if the light was following one person I don't know and then they switched places or something would that have done something maybe I'm just throwing out ideas Not that we can do that, but I don't know, something like that. I don't remember that. Bane slashes his axe down in the water. Oh, I thought this was something. It's my tail! Hold, hold, hold on. So if, if a ray's tail is cut off, will she grow a new one? Like a, like a lizard, yes. Like a lizard. It detaches if there's danger. Oh my god, just don't grab her by her tail too hard. That man <laughs> just like flops around. That man just prevented his wallet from being stolen. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Your tail didn't. I'm just gonna take a peek at my character sheet real fast. That's not allowed. <laughs> Out of just a, a moment of sheer no, we're frustration. Fine. We're fine. Echelon just like really just rapid fire pulls out an arrow knocks it and then just shoots the other um orb while she's standing on this one near her do you, what, you do that yeah yeah okay yeah um oh i'm run hit i'm class 10. I really thought he was going to say roll for initiative. As she's about to fire it, he was Favorite like, enemy orb. <laughs> yeah. We are literally, I just realized we're literally. If Esmond was here, he could be pondering these orbs. Yeah, pon we're going to ponder the heck out of those orbs. Every time you say orb, though, it's legit that I just think of the wizard. Oh, yeah, you hit the. Uh... Yeah, the orb scar on, ping, bounces off, hits the ceiling, um, leaves a little bit of scratch. But no other effects. What's the thought? Pun unintended. So you touch one, it makes your hair stand up. That's probably electric. Have you guys touched both of these? Yeah, but at the same time when the pulses went through, and nothing. Um, when they did that, there was there were mechanical sounds behind the walls and ceiling, but uh, nothing else that seemed to happen. We're thinking the light with the light shining on us while we're touching it is preventing the mechanism from working. Okay. Let me have everybody so, roll perception check. We've, we've done it. We've finally been stupid enough. It's my best. Being stupid? Yeah. Perception. Oh, I'm bad at that. Okay. 
Holy shit, I rolled a good roll. I'm perceptive as hell, too. Um, yeah, I think Ishtalan, uh, you're the first one to really notice it. Um, when you're moving around and the lights from the crystals are tracking you, they're not perfect. Sometimes they're a little bit late. Sometimes they're a little off. We stand on the water, I'm gonna get shocked, so I can't do much of anything. Shit. Yeah, and just mechanically so you know, basically if a light is on, it is there is electricity going through the water. And the more lights that are on, it seems the stronger it gets. Mm -hmm. um, just mechanically, because you've already experienced it, for every light that's on, um, the last, at least, it seemed to be increasing in damage each time, but it stopped at 8d6 damage, lightning damage. Short Thank God for that. It is not suddenly like 400d6. Um, and sorry, just to reiterate that, yeah, for each crystal that is illuminated, it seems to be 8d6 lightning damage. I want, I want to try something, I think. Um, I think... Can I... I'm gonna put you into a corner. And she's going to pick up Ava. Uh, and Nobody puts baby here. in a corner! <laughs> she says... That. Flailing as she gets put in a corner. But yeah, with uh, player consent, she's she's not gonna stick her there. Okay. Um, are you dropping her down in the water? What you... Out. Well, I think she's going to uh, wave at Casey and say, "Hey, get out of the light for a minute. Um, you don't want Ava to get shocked." Because. Gotcha. All right, am I right to the right of her down there in that little pocket? Uh, no. So she stuck you over here? Uh, yeah, where you were. Okay, okay. Good. When you all move into those positions, let me check. Yes, with everyone where you are now, the lights, the crystals all go out. From the door. <laughs> then going to um seeing that she takes a breath and then says work the first time and she's just gonna start running this way um and you're like kicking off the oh, walls sorry. levitating no she's actually just dropping down um to give herself better purchase because she's not as fast when she's floating Okay. Um, sorry, for a, on a point of clarity, though, um, just in terms of making this all digestible, we're doing entire rounds, but as soon as a crystal does illuminate, um, th that is when the electricity does start. It, it, do it doesn't wait till all the way at the end of your movement. I've just been doing that so that um, there's okay. some orderliness. So it's not necessarily... So it's not a matter of the electricity comes when the beam fixes on someone. It does, yeah. Yes, when the beam fixes on someone, that's when the electricity begins. I've just been doing it in rounds so that there's some structure and... Does it shock when it locks like onto the person or when it's seeking someone? Because it seemed to be slower than Casey, right? All right both of you guys. 
You have never so far seen the light searching for someone without pointing at someone. Maybe just being real fast? I don't know. Just, uh, I'd like to not be in the water try testing it out, though. <laughs> she says, looking down at her feet. They're just like hovering ever so slightly above there. <laughs> I mean, the water walker, you have resistance, but it is, yeah, you are touching. At a point, uh, do you want to go back south? I mean, I suppose, but I don't want to waste all the time. I just can't think of anything else to help with. Is it... I think that we should test out Araya's thing. We should let her try to run through invisible. We'll have everyone hide and see if it if it is vision that these things... Oh, is it open right now? Because I could just try it now. Wait, no, I'm in the water. <laughs> well, no, get out of the water. I need to... Yes, that's what I was saying. <laughs> She's looking Or over. you all get shocked just a little bit. I don't like that one as much. Um, I'll just, I'll hop back on. Like, I'm not going to go Finn, far, but I'll... Finn, it, Finn interrupts you all and says, What? What's that's that? What's happening? And, um, Aria, you see that the fountain, or the water that you're in, begins to glow, like, with a golden, dim golden light, like that of the Temple of the Maiden. Oh, don't mind the... The, uh... Huh? She's consecrated by taking a bath. <laughs> oh my god. Stu. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> or she peed in it, you know, either way. I, it's both. It doesn't have to be either <laughs> or. That's the consecration. Well, I was, so uh... Glad. What's going on? What's happening? Nothing, nothing. It's fine. It's, um... It just got a little warmer. <laughs> Anticipated consequence. Um, here. So I'm gonna get out of the tub, but with like the least amount of splashing I can manage. Ring out my dress. Okay. Um. One moment. Let me let me get Ava out of the water at least while you're testing this out. And then she's going to uh, head back over and around this thing. You see like a little bit of like lights going on and off as she passes through various zones of visibility and, and uh, non-visibility the lights and then she's gonna go over to that same corner and uh, pick her up out of the water basically she's like just stand on stand on my boots for expedience sake I just move myself back to where we started okay so you guys go through the process of going all the way down to the bottom and then Shalom makes her way back. Oh, I was actually. Oh, I was actually just going to. No, I was just going to uh, keep hovering there so you could stay there while Array is testing it out so we don't have to spend the time. Oh, yeah, that works. Okay. I'm yeah, this will be every... fast. But I, I won't be able to hear you if um, if anything happens, so. <laughs> if you if you get it like so cute, then just go back, go back to the start. Go back Absolutely. to where you were. Can yes. you see while you're th in that? Of course. Well, I guess just go all the way across. And if you mm. see the doors open, they'll go all the way through. Because otherwise, mm. you just turn invisible. You will go right back in order to hear us if you can't communicate any other way. So if you don't hear anything from me or see anything from me, just assume that it worked? What? No, let's just, it'll be fast. So she sort of like just fiddles with the uh, the ring on her finger and allows what little shadows in this corner where it's not reached by those crystals uh, swallow her in the darkness that is invisibility and takes a step off the um, the bath and into the light of that first crystal. All right, um, show me where you're moving to. Um, yeah, so you 
become invisible. All the sounds around you become muffled, and sounds of people's voices are seem distant and uh, indecipherable. So you step down from the fountain, um, just as you move north of the fountain into the um, water. Do um, you have water walk? Or are you floating on top of it? I have water walk. Okay. Um, yeah, as soon as you step down just north of those fountains, the crystal <laughs> illuminates and shines a light onto you, though you're invisible. There's a <laughs> crack of lightning uh, through the water, and you feel it course up through your muscles. No! Uh, incredibly no. painful. Give me my damage. I'm retreating back to the fountain. Okay, 30 points of lightning damage. Do I get it halved because I was water walk? Yes. I nope. take it from the screaming and the lightning that that did not work. No, nope, it was a horrible idea. I was really wrong to even think about trying it. It was a thought. We've been trying everything else, so. All right. We need to map this place and find all the dark bits. Because it's not just a matter of getting two of us through. We don't know what's next and, and who needs to be. So we have to find a way for all of us, all all of us to get through successfully. So um, uh, I'm going to sit and I'm going to draw. A b- bath. Hey, Sean, this is your room. How would you do it? Is it my room? Don't think. Just. just it's a hundred percent your room. I mean, it's I not was mine. going. I was going to just try and make a run for it, but. Um... Yeah, try try to run, and then we'll figure it out. Standing on her boots, Saver just kind of looks down at her feet and looks up at her, and looks down at her feet. You want to be put back at the south where you're out of the light and also out of the water? <sighs> yeah, I suppose. That seems like such a waste of time. How long do you have with these? Uh, it's every 10 minutes or so. I keep using them as long as. Uh, sometimes it seems I think they get temperamental, but I've never tested my luck against them. Okay, but uh, let's go through the middle. I just wanna, I paid attention on the way up here as best I could until I was um, staring at your butt for the entire second half. But for the first half, I mapped out a little bit of the room so I could get the lay of it. Let's take a a route on the way down there and a different route on the second half so I can- I'm pretty sure my butt is a better sight than this room. As she says this, as she's uh, walking her to this and then down the middle yeah and so you guys begin to kick off different objects to make your way down through the south um i think yeah, this time think... she's actually just gonna let her like piggyback on her so that she has a better view and then uh Ishlan can just use like her arms to help guide herself through this that's good um yeah i think because you you are descending a bit when you're, you're carrying the extra weight of a person um let's add a little bit of a skill check list dc um yeah, we'll say a DC 15 acrobatics um, or athletics, your choice, um, in order to kick off the walls without touching the water. Okay, well, not that. <laughs> uh, so. She almost uh, just like tumbles face first in the water because uh, Ava's like looking at something and kind of like leaning back and makes her uh, face fault a little bit. But she will quickly use um, just like stunting. She she uses uh, or she gestures and the water like gets out of her way really quick as she touches a foot down and to try that again. Uh, yeah, managed to kick from wall to wall. Um, yeah, unless I just one test is enough to make to the room. Do 
you see what you needed? Yeah, I got just a little bit better of an idea. Um, yeah, and I think, Ava, you, you noticed the same thing that Mr. London noticed before. Like, the crystals don't seem to be perfect. Like, sometimes they don't notice you right away as you come around a corner. Um, sometimes they're maybe just a little bit off-center as they track you. Hey, on the way back, is it possible that you can get, like, all of them to look at you? I don't know, I'm just trying to think, maybe there's some combination of them, like, some trick of the light, somehow. It just does have to do with those, those two balls. Just on you, kick your way and yeah. floating easily to get right there. And as you do get there, yeah, all four of them are shining um, at you, and the door f closes and there's lightning cracking through the water. Our mate wants to just like repose there and just be. Anything useful? I feel very exposed. Just stunning imagery, that's all. I'm just gonna make her way back to this one. Well, I'm all out of ideas that don't involve just running for it and or um, the whole point of coming here in the first place, which is to find my sister. So, uh, running for it it is. Do you want to try? The lights are kind of slow. Do you want to try touching the orbs before the lights actually focus on us? Jumping out from the wall real quick. Did the, did the door slide down the moment the lights came on, or when the beam focused? Um, when those are kind of the same thing. Like when okay. the beam, the light comes on, shining at you. Yeah. The well, light, the light doesn't it. come on. The light doesn't come on and then search for you. It doesn't come on until it's shining at you. I mean, I could try and slap them both at the same time. Or not at the same time, but as fast as I can. Uh, so I guess she'll go over here and she touches it, um, has her feet hovering just above the water. And then for... Um, takes a breath. It's like, let's get the house. Uh, Touches it, slaps it, and then is going to take off running toward this other side as fast as she can, just on the surface of the water, because it's faster. Okay. Yeah, so you're touching that one. Um, as soon as you as soon as you begin to make your sprint and you let go of it, you feel that tingliness coming that from that you feel when you're touching uh, the sphere goes away. Um, as soon as you step out into the light there at your full run, the crystal mm -hmm. illuminates and glows at you. By the time you've probably made it another 10 feet, the door <laughs> has closed. Um, actually, and lightning's already beginning to surge. Um, now you do have resistance to this, but you will face some damage. Twenty-seven base lightning. If you, just... yeah, you can continue to do what you're doing. Though. That's just where you've made it so far in this movement. Um, and you won't have to face damage again. I don't, sorry, I don't know exactly how to distribute this because it would really be over time. But D and D rounds. Yeah. Does the just to expedite it? I guess. Does that tingling sensation leave the, her as soon as the light comes on? Or as, as soon as she the light... lets go of the sphere? As soon as she lets go of the sphere, okay. Oh, you're not transmitting. 
she's focused too much on getting to the other side to say anything, but um, so she just keeps sprinting, uh, taking shocks every step. So it's a little bit like, ow, 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 fuck, ow, shit. <laughs> and then she <laughs> leaves up onto here, uh, slaps the other one, realizes nothing is happening, leaps up onto this, and uh, just kind of shakes the tingles out of her hands. And says, that did not work. Uh, and, and, and for detail, each time you you did touch or release or, or uh, one of the spheres, you did hear <laughs> movements behind the walls. That didn't work. It felt like that feeling you get when you touch the ball goes away as soon as you stop touching it, which is some kind of metaphor for something, I'm sure. And I think it has to be at the same time, literally. Yeah, we tried that, but not without the lights. Yeah, and again, touch? currently, I think the I think the northernmost and the westernmost lights are pointing at Ishtalan. Yeah, um, and more than likely, the northernmost is pointing at Casey. So the northmost is pointing two beams. Oh, um, no. Um, anyway, let's just say Casey's not being pointed out. I guess I should have described that earlier if that was helpful. What if you lie down in the water? I suppose it's very invigorating, but it might invigorate me to death. Again. Araya is busy drawing a map to see if there's a thing that tells us things. I'm mapping the light and shadow for each little one. I'll find a way! Okay, what if we work together so that you guys up there can touch those, but the light's not shining at you while it happens. Like, the lights follow us, people will get shocked, but then you can touch those without the lights seeing you? Would that be the better way around then? This does seem like these things only have one beam of light. I have... Or Casey can do the thing where we can be around without getting shocked. Uh, and it's possible for someone to just stand on the edge of this and also touch these things, right? Like if they stretch out. Um, yes, although, yeah, it, that will require a, um, probably an acrobatics check because that is you leaning out and balancing. But. Or if they oh. like sit on top of it or something, but... Yeah, sitting, sitting, you won't be able to reach. But if you like stood and, and leaned out on the way, or like laid on it, you could. You would just be a stretch. It's like a squirrel trying to reach the feeder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we could try that. Maybe. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm. I'm beat. Casey, you said something about trying to touch the orbs without the lights coming on at all. How would we do that? That's that. Let's try that first before I guess distracting the light. Faint, faint, faint says, you, you've all tried going really fast. Have you tried going slow? I 
I mean, we're probably right not going. But we try being faster. It's a. Uh, it took. Just a just so, a thought. So she ran from there, and it took ten feet for the light to come on, or so. Like she mm. got, or. It took ten feet for the door to close. Just because the door physically has to close, the light comes on like once it's done. The light comes on instantly, but it doesn't track instantly. I should say, um, I didn't. Mm, assuming hmm, or this. there is sometimes a delay when the light comes on from when you like leave cover but it's not consistent sometimes it's instantaneous and sometimes you've taken a step or two does anything happen um, when they touch the the, the rocks that shock, the, the lights themselves. Did they feel anything? No. No. I think they you've tried move. that before, so somebody touched one on yeah. yeah. Um There's nothing on the base of these crystals, right? Buttons or anything? Mm. No, there doesn't seem to be anything that's intended for interaction. But the it seems as though the, the water getting in there is, is unintentional. Us can actually move the water away from things. So, actually, theoretically, we could move the water away from the base of these crystals and make two of them not hurt anyone. It's just the two others that are left. Anyone else have any ability to make little dams? I mean, I. I think I can make two. Right, but if it's kind of the same thing that I can do, they have to be close, right? Or within a certain distance? Or does it does it work differently for you? I mean, I think I can do it in two different spots. Chris, you can maybe tell me otherwise. It says I can have two of the non-instantaneous effects active at a time. Um, and which one are you trying to do? Um, shape water to move it away from the base of a crystal. Mm -hmm. I guess the better question is, would that be a big enough space to completely isolate the crystal from the water? Isn't the thing you're doing is instantaneous, though, right? Because you're doing the change the flow direction of water at five feet. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wait. What does that have to do with it? It just says you can have two non-instantaneous effects active. Will I guess be the ones that last an hour. Alright, fair. Wait! And then she throws out a hand um, and freezes the water around the base of the. Uh, the uh -huh. And which one? Uh, just probably this one because she's the closest to it. Okay, yeah. The water around it freezes 
uh, into ice. Uh, and she's standing in the light, so I guess you'll see if the uh, lightning gets out of the ice. Um, yeah, so with the, the water around the base frozen, um, the light does come on and shine at you, but there's no pulse of lightning that goes through the water. <laughs> she raises a hand to this guy and says, Freezing! I always knew you were cold. <laughs> she cool. beams. And then says, I can do that. Just two things at once. Is it If it's the same for you, then maybe you can get the other two? I'll get the one on the, uh, the far side. Fair enough. I'm just going to move over to there to freeze this one as well. Ice builds around the base. The light shining at you, but no lightning's coursing through the room. Yeah, Casey will do the same, working carefully to freeze the water around the base of this one here. And then finally down to the southernmost one. Okay. Yeah. And after some careful moving and you've frozen the base of all four pillars. Um, and now the lights come on, there is no more lightning coursing through the room. <laughs> right, well, and we can just skate on top of this now. Um, but she comes back down to put her feet onto the top of the water, letting the, the poor boots take a break. Casey will keep an eye on whatever ice block is within his eye line to make sure it's not melting or otherwise being destroyed. Yeah, keeping an eye on it, yeah. It, nah, it should last for an hour as best you can tell. Unless something changes. Alright, everyone. Should be good to come into the water if that's your thing. Are you sure it's safe? Try it and see. Thing drops down. Splash. Ah, it seems to be okay. He's going to try to investigate in the top right this little device here. Just push it, pull on it, twist it a little bit like they've probably already done. Maybe cast light on it, just to sort of see what happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you begin to do some experimentation up there in that upper right sphere. Fane, as he wanders the room, says, This must be where I lived. The, the people of old. Look at, look here, this is our, this is our room. Some of this. Oh, someone made us mark here some scratches. Oh, the ancient ancestors lived here. What does Thank it say? The. Oh, sorry. Uh, Ava's like, Thane, don't hang around in the center. If something bad happens, you're not going to be able to get away before the floor shocks you. Oh, okay. I'll move to where you are. She looks over at me as he comes, she comes into view, and she's like, "Did it say, uh, I don't know, Bob was here?" Well, it seems some initials that uh, some people, they were people who lived here. They were, they were in love. A H plus T N heart arrow. Hey, the thing like that. I guess the more things change, the more they stay the same. <laughs> over, she wanders over to this other one, and uh, having had another look at the plaque, she's kind of like staring into the. It's reflective, right? The sphere. Um. Yeah, it's kind of like a blurry reflection, though. Um, but yeah. She's just sort of like staring into the the blurred reflection of her eyes, and it's like. All right. So if I see me. I know who I blame, but I don't know if this is meant to be like a self, metaphorical self-reflection thing or not. <laughs> Out of nowhere, Ava goes, I'm going to try the thing that Rhea did. She had <laughs> twin guiding bolts. <laughs> Are you twinning a spell? No, no, it's, um... 
uh, because the guiding bolt she fires doesn't do damage. There are two of them. They just basically give light things up and. Hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. Do you really do that? She really does that. Okay. Yeah. There are two <laughs> blasts from Ava that aren't aren't destructive, but uh, for just a moment, yeah. Each of the spheres glows and then dims down. There's no, no effect. <laughs> they have now turned into <laughs> disco balls. <laughs> Although, to be yes. fair, I, su- I suppose if you do want to attack one, you do have advantage. <laughs> well, that did nothing. I mean... Breathe in deep, but take no breath. It sounds like being underwater, huh? I'm trying sticking my head. Okay. I tried sticking my head under water there, but it didn't do anything. Yeah, and Finn says, All right, so all the poems, they, they tell you how to solve the riddle. They do when you're not being done like we are. Yeah. I mean, have you tried staying underwater longer? Uh. And she goes and just dunks her head into the, the pool and just stays there for a good three minutes, five minutes. Or until someone like taps her on the head, on the arm, or something and says, Look, that did nothing. Could someone hide in the pools and then? jump out fast enough to touch these two things without the light shining on them? Make a try. Worth a shot. Alright. Um, try to get out of the light for you. I probably want to find the spot. Um, you want me to do it? My, my arm's a bit sh- shorter. Yeah, but you got a big heart. Oh, I give it, give it a try. And so you want us to go as fast as we can, pop up into the water and grab onto it. No, no, no. Try it your way first. Go super, super slow. Like you're trying to sneak up on it. And then, then we'll do fast. <laughs> so you see Finn gets into the drinking fountain. Bubbles. Who's, who's touching the other one? Oh, I guess I can. And she's gonna hide in the fountain too. And if you see Van slowly begin to emerge, eyes just above the water, moving slow, like the chameleon. The light. He's just trying to mirror him on the other side. Okay. Um. Yeah, you're, you're moving as fast as you can, or you're moving slowly? Slow, yeah. Roll stuff. Mm. Yeah, the, uh, as you emerge slowly from the water, uh, you get a little bit closer than Fane does, but the light comes on and shines at you. Wait, okay. Wait, all right, let's try this again. Here, oh, wait, um, are you... Who's... who's hey, it starts skating to the floor, I guess walking to the center of the room. All right, come come be around me for a second. Uh, Casey, are you sneakier than Thane is? Sneaker than I not my specialty, I'm a hunter. Oh, okay. So Casey, you want to be sneaky? The it doesn't matter. not sneaky. <laughs> you gotta chase down the, you gotta chase them down and hit them with your, with your axe. That's hunting. Uh, well, so, like, from from here? Yeah, once Casey gathers around, uh, uh, yes, once Casey gets closer, uh, as Ava will move closer towards him, she's like, ah, it doesn't matter. She mimics the spell that she learned from uh, the person they don't exist. 
but they, she's pretty sure that they did. And uh, uh, a little puff of smoke, but in the form of uh, little stars, sort of goes out and around. And then, uh, yeah, twinkling a little bit softer, everybody gets passed without trace. And she's like, okay, we're gonna try it again, but you guys this time, and Thane, you're gonna come over here in this area and uh, stay out in the dark area. This, this is where she was, and we're, we're gonna hide, and they're gonna try to sneak. I think I figured out some safe spot. Okay, go there. Looks over at the, the map that Rosemary drawings whistles a little bit since you have been busy. Well, I mean, the map and paper. the map. <laughs> this has been a lot of time. All right. Um, West side. Oh wait, sorry. Who was yeah. who was doing which? It's it um, was... Casey. You just used the west side, and Ishalon, you did the east side. Okay. You get in the bath, both you guys. Oh. I can I can sneak from here. No, get in the bath, Casey. You just got to get in the water, so you're totally you submerged. In the, completely in the water. Absolutely I mean, the only way this is going to work. You have to breathe, but not breathe. But I could also just sneak from here. No, nope, it won't work. You gotta be under that water. The water calls and you descends, Casey. This is your room. It's calling you. You have to pay attention to her. It's her room, so she yep. makes the room rules. And she's wait, saying wait. you gotta be in that water. Yeah. Why don't you have the maiden do it? She's already been in the water. Shh, sh quiet you. <laughs> I will happily get in the right. water once Casey does it first. Defeat your fear, Casey. It's not my room. Overcome, <laughs> overcome your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. w wash yourself clean of those weaknesses. But look at him, he's, uh, he's, he's got all the glowing bits, but if he dies. Uh, he won't die. Oh. Ava starts going, Casey, Casey, Casey. <laughs> Know, the water is warm. Hey, don't make him do it. Maybe he's afraid. Maybe he's what they would call chicken. Chicken. <laughs> oh, we don't use that term anymore. <laughs> Not after. It is the darkest Last term. year. <laughs> Casey moves over to the water. <laughs> I like how distressed you seem. <laughs> Uh, and as he steps up onto the ledge, he's looking over at his and says, This better work. Sh -sh Sneaky, Casey. Sneaky. Okay. Um, and you're just, just before he is about to step down into the water, he starts to wave his hand in the same motion that you've seen him do in the whole room and pauses. And then just steps down with a splash the water sizzles underfoot. Ishtalon absolutely just like does a little fist wave before she pops down fully into the water. In, in Casey the steps into the water and steam rises. I'm so happy right now. I'm ah! so happy right now! Uh, in the mind, it's better work. Your doc says to Casey, okay, so you tell Ishalon when you guys are going to start rising at the same time and go slow. Sneaky. Wait, wait, wait. When I was under the, the water, I couldn't hear what people are saying. I just had to kind of guess how what was an appropriate amount of time to come up. At the same time, while Eva is saying this to Casey, Ishalon is also saying all right, uh, on my count of three. I mean... One, two, three, slow like a chameleon, or not a chameleon, slow like a stick. Just three. <laughs> and then she's going to emerge out of the water like a swamp thing, or a sloth, really. Casey starts humming in the mind link. Um, and Ishlan, you're hearing him humming a song. Um, can she's under the water she's actually while she's saying this she's in her mind she is uh, whispering something to herself and she can like cast guidance on herself for this and like I don't know if you can do this slow
Oh, plus, plus 10. I just remembered from Pass Without Trace. So. Yeah, so 27 plus 3 for a 30, plus 10 for a 40. Ishtalan emerges slowly from the water. Crystal does not illuminate. You got a 30. Casey emerges from the water. The crystal does not illuminate. You touch the... The, uh... Yeah, touching the spheres. There's... <laughs> a sound behind the walls. The door does not come down. I forgot which Doc one we were hoping for for a second. I was like, damn it. Doc You're like, no, rushes wait, over hey. towards Casey and cheering like, hey. She, yeah. she also yeah. does and like actually like gives him a, a bro hug on the back and like, hey, you did it. Look at you. You had the bath for the first time in your life. I'm so proud of you. Um, yeah, Get behind your ears. Con converge in, in the center of the room. The crystals do not shine lights onto you. You have. It seems you have solved the puzzle. And then she's going to also go over to Fane and uh, pick pick him up, give him a hug, and be like, "You see, it, it was really dumb, but you were right." Casey's dripping wet and looks like a cat that just had a bath. Casey, I think I feel the proudest of you that I ever have ever. Yeah. I'm gonna use shape water to pull some of the water off of him. It just like rings his sound self out that way. <laughs> water bends it into a little sphere and then it just lobs it back into the sun. So oh, people yeah. who are coming by can drink Casey water. I guess. Well, that that's the array of water pool, and this is the Casey water pool. Uh, yeah, Doc's going to uh, rush. Right before they leave the room, she's going to rush right back down. She's going to grab a sample of the, uh, the the beautiful and immaculate, what is probably holy water at this point, as a different sample, and then run back. <laughs> mm. Okay. Yeah, you get a vial of gent slightly luminous golden bath water. At least my bath is like self-cleaning. I clean myself in it, I bless it, and it becomes clean again. <laughs> Doesn't it, even need a, she doesn't even need a still suit for the desert. <laughs> Purify. <clears throat> and you've all come together, standing on the northern side of this room. Before you, there's a door. It leads down into the deep. We're all done with everyone's doors, aren't we? So the next one's... Should be... Maybe. It. In all the stories, there's, there's a beast at the bottom. What? Mm. I think we already found the beast. That was the... Those, those pumpkins in Doc's room. The pumpkins, I think, were the least beastly. They really... Honestly, Peach, I think we should go visit those again. I'll be uh, all set, but I'm feeling okay. That's true. Doc did help. But I mean, we could maybe, I don't know, take some cuttings if we ask them for it, grows them in shep sand. I don't know, Doc, you can help us speak with those plants. Mm, yes, I can. But let's yes. let's get through the through the whole. You know, let's finish it proper first. Okay, uh, if everyone's ready, let's. Well, just in case there is a beast, I'm gonna prep a little. I think. As everyone's shuffling out, Casey's still looking miserable, kind of off to the side. And he's like, maybe this was Shalati's room. <laughs> so happy. It has been Araya's goal since the first time he opted to not step into water to force him into water, so. Sadist. Finally enough peer what? pressure. When there was a goal behind it. Yeah, when, when his sacrifice was <laughs> worth it. Do you want to take a quick break? Yeah, let's take a... Take a oh, too much water thank around. you. I have... Water break. <laughs> We've been talking about water. <laughs> yep. to, the, to the north. 
awaits a door that leads down to the deep. You see Fane checking his axe, hefting his shield. All right, whatever's down there, face it together. All the stories tell of a beast that lurks. The end of such things as this, all the stories tell. Great treasure and glory to be found. A true chest of our might. Are you talking about, like, general stories, or are there specific stories about this place? Oh. No, are there just, specific ones? Just the general stories, you know, the, tale, the tales that you, you tell the young ones. Well, so far all the stories have been off by a little bit, so maybe we should expect the opposite. Um, anyone want to scout ahead? You can hear the you water. A major leak in your place? Yes, you have water. <laughs> like, you, as you're oh saying. yeah, there is. There's just there it is. I, for, I didn't realize it would be that audible. I'll have to go fix that. <laughs> the wet bandits uh, are striking in my house now. All right, I'll be right back. <laughs> why is why is it so loud? That's insane. Maybe it's the sound shocker. of the water going down the stairs. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Why does he have the water? Is he like filling a pot? What is he doing? So immersive. Maybe he's making tea. No, maybe if they're... Oh, actually, wait, I should say it. Say it before one. Patrick, what are you making with the water? Oh, I mean, I'm filling up a pool right over there in my kitchen, so... <laughs> That's next. Next session, you'll just be in the hot tub. <laughs> Laptop balance on the edge. Um, oh. She suggests as they start to head on, uh, down. Well, since this won't seem to be about moving very slowly and quietly, and we still have this neat little spell, and she kind of indicates the shadows that are muffling them. Maybe, and if there, in case there is a beast down there, maybe we should be very, very quiet. Oh, right, yes. All right, let's go. Speaking. Should I be invisible again, too? Just no. in case? Yeah. We can't. You can't hear us. Invisible enough? Or like, why is it that you're always like, I can be invisible? It's useful. <laughs> I mean, I'm not arguing that. But the element of surprise is really useful. And, and it makes for scouting. Like, I can just go ahead and look and then come back. And and if it the thing you with I. You invisible sometimes? The when we're in the camp at night, so that we don't know that you're around? Oh. Almost. All right, you don't do that, do you? That would be a little wrong, a little odd. I'm usually studying and sleeping. I, what? You see me? Do I feel like sometimes that. stuff goes missing, though. Like, oh, but not accusing nothing, but... Uh, well, uh, no, but sometimes I do go invisible when I take a bath, because we're in the middle of the woods. Bath in the woods. Yes. Wouldn't wouldn't you want to take go invisible when you're taking a bath in the middle of town? The woods seems like a also too, but the, well, there. so towns have doors and then the woods don't. And here it's, it was it's outdoors. Yeah. Not not two minutes ago you were bathing completely visible in my clothes. You my you know it was it was bathing and laundry at the same time. Here's your soap. Oh, thank you. Oh, I should have taken my bath to do all the blood. Oh, well, maybe maybe oh. the electrocution stones will stay off for for and for now on. Yeah, after all the uh, lightning, it's perhaps all the dirt got shocked off of me. She says, as like, there's still singe marks. She's not as bad as Peach, but, you know, there's her hair standing out from in her braid like a cat's tail. Uh, as you're doing this, Ava feels... Uh, a little bit excited and seems to be anxious about moving to the next one so without saying anything she just sort of starts to descend kind of quickly a little more quickly like than she anticipated she anticipated just sneaking but instead she's doing the thing where you get a little nervous and you move a little faster than you should looks like two of us are done with this room <laughs> Save it, I, I think I she's running a little bit too fast that she can't keep up with herself and so now she's outrunning her own fall <laughs> ah! Peach would follow me about. Just gonna goofy it down these stairs. In case he right, ri yeah. rings out a sleeve and follows. 
You'll dry off really quickly. You're so warm. You descend down the stairs, twisting and winding into the dark. You know, certainly, there will be another room like the others. But each of them has been for one of you. Which one will this one be for? As you find yourselves coming into a chamber at the bottom of this flight of stairs, this room, much like the others, but a bit smaller. But here, you immediately see something that's different. This room seems to be filled with tombs, sarcophagi, a large one that seems to be newer than the others at the far side of the room, and ornamenting all the walls, pillars in this room, in beautiful carved relief, more detailed than you've seen so far. Seems to be the story of Shepherd's End. You see glorified and beautiful depictions of different people from the town, which you realize very quickly as you look at each face standing out from the stone, haloed, some of them looking joyful, some brave. These are all the people who died. You see depictions of the puddings and the brave battle of those who fought them off and those who fell. You see Miranda Pine. You see Teredian. You see Gilgain. You see Sage and Basil Porter. You see Lily. You see Damasana and bunnies, and you see Seyfried. You see Lycos and Agatha. You see Yev, the call. You see Ember, so young. You see Kran. Beth's father, hand in hand. You see Mulgwood, Goblin, husband's father, and Gwyn, his mother. You see all of those who fell and died defending the town, were never found again. And in this room, all of the sarcophagus seem to be dwarven in their make, made for kings and leaders of the dwarves, except for the centermost at the back of the room. Upon it are depictions of Brynhilda, goddess of strength, breaker of walls. You see some figures only one of you recognizes. You see Sherilyn, Harp and Hand, and you look around the room. And there's some dwarven. There's some dwarven writing. In this room, there's no plaque in common. And Vane looks to the, the stone engravings nearest the southern door and says, He talks here about from that which is dead giving to the living, <laughs> that it is not the way of kings to take with you to the other world, that which can help those who live.
Casey is definitely in awe of all of the carvings and is walking around just admiring each section of it. Um, Casey, as you pass by you, one of the pillars, you see the depiction of Topa Salsia. Uh, Peach would be doing a similar thing going around the room. She's looking for, after seeing uh, the image of Cheryl, she's looking for uh, more evidence of uh, Salinger or his dad. Any evidence of the morals. Mm, you see Shirley, but that's it. I think uh, Ava's sort of stopped uh, in front of uh, her her parents and her sister and their likeness and it's just sort of just staring at them sort of looking them over yeah. and of course Ava as you stare at the depictions of your family you don't have a memory of Lily dying it's done the same in front of the Cadneys uh, and the Vicuters and the Emmets, her extended family. Um, and then she also looks over at Cypherts and just points toward it silently. This isn't right. They didn't. Not, not, they didn't die. We're the second go around. That this happens before things went differently. People like us or some other realm went back and changed things and made a difference, and so that changed what happened to the same event. If so, then we made it better because. Yeah, because not only not everyone, some of, they're still alive, some of them. Casey's still staring at the in, in carving of his uncle Topaz. <laughs> I knew it. Topaz Alcio, did you guys see this? Gloriously defending Shepherd's Zen. Word is spread. This is amazing. He looks around over the pillar at someone. <clears throat> is, there a, is there a door or something? Does anyone see what we're supposed to do down here? Looking at the northern wall, there's no door. This is the bottom. Is sort of pieces of the call and uh, Yev, and then turns it into running her hands over the walls to see if there's any kind of catch or some other hidden door or some place that they're supposed to be going. As you feel your hands along the walls, roll nature or s stone working tools, masonry tools perhaps, or History. Religion. Actually, any of those? Well, equally bad at those. Oh, sorry. That three shouldn't be there. I did not think to cast that to be funny. As you run your hands on the stone, the depictions of um, members of Adney and the Care families, you find yourself tracing farther across the depictions of all of the the young bunnies who died. Um, it's hard to, you don't find any seams, anything that indicates that there's a secret here. I wish I were here. Well, no, you, you don't wish that are any of us, not us, or maybe 
there are some of us that, there are some of our friends that are here that didn't, that didn't die this time. Ava, you're right, and maybe it's, this is, hmm. She's gonna search along the things. You said I can roll, you said there could be a roll for religion, and I rolled a 27, so I'm gonna. Ooh, 27, yeah, you have studied rubbings of reliefs and carvings and statues of different temples. You found some entries in um, Salavis's journal. Um, you realize that when you compare the reliefs themselves to the architecture, the general architecture of the room and all of the t tombs except for the largest one at the back of the room, the relief carvings are all newer hundreds of years newer than the original architecture of the room. So the... Which one is newer then? The, our, our Shepherd's End or the dwarves? Sorry. I... Um, all the, the depictions of people from Shepherd's End and the one largest sarcophagus in the back of the room are all hundreds of years newer mm. than the dwarven aspects. So it's it's definitely certain that this was a, a dwarven temple that was then repurposed to, to be a message to us by, by hundreds of years, but still, old, long, long, long ago. Mm. Uh, a message. What's, what's it all mean? What's the message? Well, let me Sorry, see this. Right, the, the, to... the, no, it's fine. I'm gonna go to the largest sarcophagus then in back. And also a, a message to us from whom? Us, somehow? This doesn't make any sense. How are we supposed to prevent something that's already happened? Why, Ray, as we approach the... Oh, go ahead, Casey. What would Ez think? Fane, what year is it? <laughs> yeah, that was the first question we asked them. It's the same year. The year, um, 1000, or, yeah, 1019. Maybe in a while he's not here because if you saw his parents depicted on the wall of the dead, he might finally just lose it. His teeth are on the edge. I mean, he'd probably think we're in a different, you know, reality when where this happened instead okay. of what we did. Still might have every had him single, emotional lack. I mean, every single time he said he's insisted this is the same pre reality, or do you mean that this is depicting a different one? Well, I mean, if someone came here and carved this, I mean, it could still be our reality. Maybe it's yours. I'm supposed to be dead here. Hmm. Maybe the answer is inside that thing. She... The sarcophagus that I'm heading towards? Yeah, she's sort of nods her on face toward in that direction. Yeah, as you reach the sarcophagus in the back of the room, you realize almost immediately this is sorry, this is a um, not a sarcophagus exactly. This is a reliquary, just like you found before. Are the depictions to Brunhilde then? Yes. Oh, Fane, look, this is for Brunhilde, but it's it's not. It's a reliquary, kind of like the one that we had found in that other place. You're right. These are different. Look at the markings. This is the first thing we've seen to burn hill, though, the whole time we've been here. What's it? What could be inside? Maybe we I shouldn't disturb it. We should pray first, because I think Brunhilde will hear us. So I'm going to move over and start, like, tugging at the sarcophagus lid. We have to ask permission! I asked permission last time, and it was blessed! She's going to get on her knees, kneel, and, like, furiously begin praying. Oh, I have incense. 
Finn, Finn gets down on his knees as well. You have to wait for the religious nerds first. <laughs> she starts pushing. Ava sort of swats she's her like, a little. She's doing like, her. and she's like, "We didn't let her go invisible. Let her do her thing." She's, like, she's doing the most rushed like hail mary of of Brunhilde, like incense. Duh, duh, duh. As Ishlan is pushing on the side of sarcophagus, uh, Raya, describe describe your prayers. Uh, scrambling to get, like in this race against Shalati, possibly insulting the goddess Brunhilde, she scrambles to get the um, incense that's in her pouch at her side and very easily lights it with a with a. a, a slightly frustrated and angered flame to her, her hands, just pff, blue fire, incense, starts waving it around. <sighs> Brunhilde, you've guided us to this place, and this place was meant for you, but it has been used for us, and so I think that this is a message to us, and so please forgive us for the trespasses that we are about to do upon your reliquary and holy place. Understand that I think that you meant this for us, and so I'm hoping that you do not take any offense by us uh, taking a look inside. He picks like one eye open at you, he's like, are the prayers always so fast? Um, <laughs> As she does this, Ishalan's still like making a show of pushing, but she's kind of like watching over her shoulder and drops Ava a wink, and then just like making a lot of noise of like she is struggling and heaving. Araya's eyes are completely shut. The incense is clasped between her two hands as she like continues praying, murmuring. Oh no, I think she's almost got it, Ava says. <laughs> As she's winding down the prayer. <laughs> um, so as Nazareth finishes the prayer, uh, Ishtalan make an athletics ability check with advantage for help. Yeah. Ooh, 30 athletics? Yeah. There's a sliding <laughs> stone lid curves away to reveal the contents inside you see a variety of items one of them large golden hammer another one a spear a variety of potions a gauntlet you Peach, as you're standing next to the sarcophagus, looking in as they all gaze inside, you realize these are all the items that Salinger has been carrying. As the as Peach notices this, she uh kind of staggers back and into and over her friends and, and uh, but this was these were all Sal's things he the but he's not maybe, maybe if they're his things then maybe he's here or something maybe uh is my brain doing a breaking thing or anything? Because Kate's brain is breaking in real life. Uh, but yeah, you just, he, he would just right stagger now. back. Yeah, just uh, uh. All right, all of these belong to to Sound Jamoral. Um, I know, I know you all still don't remember him proper, but he this these were his his magic items, his his gear. And if they've been left here for for us, then. But also, he's not. You all don't even remember him. He's not even in this version of of anything. But his mom's I mean, was. He has to. There. Peach sits down and starts to go through her journals and notebooks. Did, Shalom kneels down next to her and like 
to her shoulders is just breathe for a moment. I don't know what the challenger was, but he was busy. Does that mean he's Brunhilda? No, no, or Brunhilda. Took on that. I don't know. Um, the goddess Brunhilda, I don't know that much about, except, you know, I sort of followed what Aurea did, sort of, but not really, you know. I don't know anything about Brunhilda, except. Maybe. Uh, and she'll look through her uh, notes. Uh, Kate, the player, doesn't remember if Peach knows this. Can I roll an intelligence check to see if Peach took the notes in her, like, notebook? Yeah, yeah. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. If you're proficient I, in history... Yeah, you can do history or investigation, either one. Kate resolved that, but is there anything else in the sarcophagus or uh, right besides the weapons? Intelligence is my least good thing. Look who rolled a nat 20. Oh, 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 very nice. well, dirty 20. Dirty 20. Yeah. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. It's fine. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Natural dirty 20. Mm -hmm. um, Still a high number. Yeah, what... Um, what what's the nature of the information that you're trying to see if Peach would have recorded? Peach is trying to see if she recorded anything about like what Salinger would have told her about Brunhilda and that you know kind of encounter with the goddess beforehand and specifically the getting of like these weapons and gear. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Salinger would have. Certainly you remember the story that Salinger and Araya told you. Um, I told you before, after Mirwood, that in some place that was another place, they found a temple of Brunhilde that was as it would have been in times of old, glorious and beautiful. And inside they found the hammer of Brunhilde, along with a variety of other ancient relics including this hammer that Salinger carried into battle. He used it when you watched him fight the leader of uh, the Oranaka's kin that helped to win, liberate and win the freedom of that tribe of people. All of these, the gauntlet that he wore on his hand that he found in the tunnels beneath Shepherd's End, the one that summons a sword and a shield, he wore it on his hand. There were a variety of potions and things that you guys had all found in your journey. They're here in this they're here in this reliquary now. Along with right. Salois's spear. It was found at the Peach. Temple of the Maiden. Go ahead. Peach would mention that to Aurea specifically. She'd say, Look, uh when when Sal got the got the spear, he he in my memory he was with you, Aurea. So do you remember that? Well, I remember Brunhilda's temple. I remember. Well, but I the remember spear. finding the spear, not not Brunhilda. It's Aloise's spear. The one from your temple. Okay, Chris, that's a pickle. I don't. Uh... It's a pickle for Araya too. You realize as you try to recall this thought that the possible this is impossible. In congruent how could the spear be in this reliquary you're aware of the spear but connecting the dots of how this could be isn't you don't understand how this could possibly have happened I think when faced with something impossible that I have to trust you Peach uh okay yeah, and and I remember it clear as anything. I remember that that this was the spear that you all found together, and I was so worried about him using it because I figured it was cursed because everything you'd fought until that point been cursed. And and I remember the gauntlet, and 
and how he couldn't wear any other armor, but that glove fit him perfect. And, and I remember him taking that giant hammer and destroying Three Moons Bleeding, that huge Aranaka man who he fought to the death the day he disappeared. So this is all his things, and if he's some kind of saint of Brunhilde or just some kind of essence that's still out there rooting for us, I guess, then, then these are, are our things now. And who knows, if we bump into him in this reality or in somewhere he exists, then we can just give it all back to him. Yeah, it sounds like we should take it. Just in case we run into this well-dressed Salinger. But for this temple and all of this, we need, we need, we need the hammer. We need the thing that breaks the walls. We need the hammer. What? What? We need, we need Brunhilde, a builder and a breaker, and the doors and the walls. There has to be a connection that, that, that this, which I just, Maybe we don't need to break these walls. Maybe we just go out no. the door that still exists. No, no, no. We need these. No, not these. Not these walls. We need metaphorical walls. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I'm not going to be very good at explaining this, but I think that, that we need this to do what we must because it was lost in such a way that not even we remember. Only Peach remembers. So it was important. But for all of this and every step of the way to make that make it so that this is available to us this time around. Uh, the history is already different than before, so it's not us that went back, but a different of us. Uh, these things make more sense when I pray. Um, I think that we should take them. And she look, also looks over at Peach. Then I yeah, I... Uh I, I, I don't think any of them would be great for me, but you know, I think that they're definitely way too heavy for me to carry almost all of them, except for maybe and like she picks up the spear might have some. Yeah, I can I can carry most of it along with me in my bag. I'm just thinking that whenever Kabeth comes back from wherever she's at that a hammer would be something that I feel like she could have pretty good. Well. And have you any of you are all the items still in the reliquary? Peach has not touched them yet, so yes. Uh, but I guess with this, she would look at her friends and say, um, but yeah, uh, I we, suppose we should. We start, we sh let's just make sure there's nothing crazy that's going to happen. No, it, no, nothing's here. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. No, I, I'm last I feel time. like this is, yeah, I'm sorry, Ray. I think that I should grab the, and she'll reach wait, in wait, and wait, 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 wait! Don't we have? I mean, gosh, I wish I was here. Does anybody else have any way to see if there's like magic in the area? Yeah, I can do that. It just takes some time. I can too, but this is Peach. Just reaches in and grabs the gauntlet. Hmm. Okay. Reaching in and grabbing the gauntlet, you take it up from the the velvety bed at the bottom of the reliquary. Nothing terrible happens. You do she notice. Just... You do notice something, and all of you notice something. It is also seemingly feels impossible, but seems to lead some more weight, lead, lend more weight to Peach's story about this person who never was. You see one of the shepherds and one of the merit badges that only you have. Peach would put the gauntlet down and take the merit badge instead. But she'd look at her friends and she'd say, Look, this is all either from Salinger or for him. So that means that it's for us to use. Because if he was here, he would want us as well prepared as possible. And for all we know, this is a message in a bottle to us across 
wherever he's stuck. So. Let's just take it all. I mean, do you think there's stuff in these other... Do you... Um, those look like graves, Casey. I wouldn't... And fences. Um, our people don't bury the dead with things. You give it to those who are living. It's the way of the town. We suffer the winter. Right. Okay. Bridges then takes the Salavisa spear, oh. which I don't think she knows is Salavisa spear. So, just like, oh, I cool. Prefer, spear. I, I referred to it as such. I, I so if, if you were, if Islam was paying attention. Oh, okay. Might, um, there's a there's a vast number of items. I, I'll go through them in detail later, but for right now, just to, so you have an eyeball of what's in there, um, you see what seems to be a set of clothes, cartographer's tools, a strange is that a spice pouch. It's items. all his stuff. It's not just his magical gear. Damn. Mm -hmm. You see a strange globe. You see the gauntlet. You see the spear, the the giant hammer, a variety of potions. Seems to be a. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What would be the what's most this, expensive thing? What's this globe? I've never seen. <laughs> what's this globe all about? Mm, looks as though there's a set of traveling robes and a ring, a great sword that seems to have been forged from a strange dark metal. And you don't need to divide this now, or something. You can take it all together. Yeah, for the for the sake of expediency. Peach being the only one with the bag of holding left, because as in and around, uh, would anything that somebody doesn't grab, she would just make sure that it is all safely packed away in the beaded bag of holding. Casey unexpectedly tosses the globe to Doc, saying, what do you make of this? Uh, she juggles it before oh, catching it, thankfully. Uh, and I don't know, what does she think of it? Uh, Patrick has no idea what the globe is. I'm not sure. It's strange. There seems to be... When you, when you move, shake it, it's almost as like there's something, is there a liquid inside, or is that snow? You're not, not sure. Hmm. Yeah, she'll study it, and as she's walking out, and as uh, Peach is uh, shoveling things into, into the bag. Peach is doing this very carefully. I'm just picking up the sarcophagus and giving me a few pats on the wall. Well, and hold out the spear after contemplating it, holds out the spear toward Ure and says, That slave was your mentor? Yeah. Adopted my, my, mother? A little bit of both. The high priestess, yeah. Uh, it was always hanging on her wall. I don't. It would be nice. I, I, I just don't know how to use it. Well, maybe I can tell you. Although, having seen you try to get over walls and things, I am afraid you might stab yourself on the foot. I'll keep the pointy side away from me, so I might just only stab one of you. Uh, let me just make sure that... Mm. It's so wonderful to see the gods' hands and things, even still. So, as you guys begin to kind of lift the different items out of the reliquary uh, the last one because it's the heaviest and most cumbersome still in there is the giant golden hammer I don't even know how much can that bag hold um never pushed it to its limits 500 pounds are we how close are we to that I have not been like we would shoved a bunch of crap in it how heavy is the hammer? I don't have these stats in front of me. Occasionally I'll randomly check, and if it's too much, it explodes and everything lost. Perfect, okay. Lost, or does it just explode like a fragmentation grenade? That's good. We're relying on Peach and Trap. Kate to no. take good notes of weights and measures. Things they're not good at. I remember that hammer being something like 30, 20 or 30 pounds. It's, like it's heavy. Year. Yeah. I believe it's 50 pounds. Okay. Oh, okay. Even even better. 
I would like to see it. it. Although, yeah, I can't lift that either at all. All of us are just like, <laughs> takes the four a of bunch us. Of just put it into my bag. Just Kay. no tanks. Well, Fane can carry it, and in fact, this right. this one Pardon. specifically is of Brunhilde. It would be interesting. Was there any writing or anything around the reliquary itself? Was there any anything we haven't read or any inscriptions that we haven't translated? No? Okay. Um, Fan says, um, he kind of stands up on top of his toes and peeks inside and says, I don't know if I'd, don't know if I'd feel right holding something so precious. And then you came down here with us. So your, your means according to what Ray is saying, you're supposed to be here. And we're yeah, supposed and to be here, and... And Fane, I'll... Sal would have, would have wanted somebody to use it. You should use it on behalf of him and, and Brunhilde. Use it well. In my life, I've given my, my prayers to Brunhilde and the Maiden. I'll at least carry it for a while till we find the proper owner. And he reaches in and gets his hands around it. Gets to even lift and as he does, there's a <laughs> a golden pulse that passes out through the room. And at the edges of your memory, something begins to form and fill in, like, like a liquid pouring into a basin. And your memories of Salinger return. Yeah, Casey, Casey starts grinning. Finn, Finn glances around. What was that? We have so many stories to tell you. Salinger. What? What all happened? No, you, Peach, you, you remembered him. We, it, yeah. He's my boyfriend. Of course, I remember him. That's. We have different memories of that. To think, Peach. <laughs> Uh, sorry. You're yeah. that conversation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, and they might be filling in slowly, like just a, a trickle here and there. It might take you a few days to remember everything, but they're definitely already returning. Casey will just make another round of the room, kind of looking around at everything. And each passing through the room, like one more time upon each of the faces of those who be so many people you've lost. Are there any of the priestesses among the faces of the dead? In, um, no, none of the priestesses from the temple. This is a holy place. Oh, <laughs> shit. Um, yeah, I think that uh, mm -hmm. as much as it, filled with the warmth of the memories of Sal and all of the uh, wonderful times spent together and uh, just his, his character, his presence, and who he was as a person, it, even with that, there's still a lingering desire to leave the room, and so she's going to start making her way out, because staring back at all those faces, it's, uh, especially the ones that, at least as memory serves right now, shouldn't be there, it's a, it's a bit much. He was the first one to leave the room. I'm gonna um, uh, go back to, to praying. Well, if everyone is leaving, she's gonna be saying some prayers of thanks. I think surprising Araya, Peach would stay alongside. She's not praying, but she is sitting quietly and 
being calm and thankful. She'll probably be the last one to leave this room. Casey will send a mind link message to the Lord of the Harvest and say, Headed back your way. How good is it? Gord. The long trickles out after uh, Ava, after glancing back um, toward Peach and yeah. Araya. As Wait, did I put in the right names? I think I did. As uh, Peach and Araya are kind of left in the room, Peach would wait for Araya to kind of look up a, cop, a moment of like, you know, opening her eyes during prayer. And she'd say to Araya, do you, does the main have anything about anything like this? Do you think this means he's, he's back? Like he's, like he's just missing like Safred in Quebec now? Like he'll, like he'll be back, back? What, what can Hill do for this kind of thing? I wouldn't, I wasn't there the last time you guys discovered a reliquary from her. I think... Hmm. I think if we have no memory of his death, then he's not lost to us. And that we still have a memory means that he's not lost to time and space. So there's hope, right? And, uh... Brunhilde, the gods... They can just barely touch us here and they gave us that hope so maybe there's something important about him and something important about what the, was given to us um, yeah I, I think so too thank you Raya she uh, pats your hand, or, you know, holds your hand and squeezes it. I'm glad you didn't forget him. What if you were the only remaining light that, that could have brought any piece of him back? Uh, you know, once you all have your memories coming back, you'll be wondering how any of you forgot him in the first place. I def definitely don't now forget some of his outfits. They're choices. Oh, choices? He was always to the nines. I mean, except when he was coming off the docks. But even then, underneath the coveralls, his shirt was pressed. His slacks were pressed. His socks matched. I oh, thought God. never, were... Never darned. I thought you were exaggerating. I thought you were exaggerating. I uh, didn't believe, and I shouldn't have doubted, but yeah, he uh, a, a little bit more than life, yeah. Uh, yeah, Array is going to give one last uh, deep and heartfelt bow, her forehead touching the, the stone floor in front of the reliquary. Uh, to Brunhilde and uh, private thanks. Yeah. And then she'll uh, snuff out like the, the, she'll leave the, ooh, she'll leave the incense at the reliquary and then uh, back out slowly. Then uh, kind of tries to get up as quietly as he can, not to be noticed. And <clears throat> And that's on the stairs. Oh, I I want to take a look at the um the hammer if you if you don't mind up up upstairs though. Hey, of course. Um, last one out. Peach would look down at the uh, reliquary now empty, and uh, she'll uh, press the merit badge between her fingers and sort of reattach it to where hers used to be on her shoulder. And uh, she'll just say kind of out into the space of the room, well, I hope you'll be back. I hope this isn't the last we'll ever remember you, Sal and Jamoral. The last one. 
last one from the room. He just turns and leaves this chamber that has been waiting hundreds of years. Um, I'm going to expedite you guys up through a part, but you're not locked out. You can come back. There's just a part that I want to get to. Um, you move your way back up through the many layers of the Temple of Brynhilda, that you've come to learn is the ancient vault the dwarves hid in the dark. A place that's been changed to have a purpose that was in fact for you, which and you come to realize somehow possibly connected to a friend. You make your way up through the many levels beyond mounds of dirt from which flowers are growing, beyond a garden and the lords of the harvest who, with deep whale song, just seem to acknowledge your passing without alarm. You head up till you get back to the surface, until you get to the final door that leads out. Be <laughs> Being unable to open it, you will die of old age. <laughs> Just kidding. New characters. I think I think we just create a new society. <laughs> just above. Join with the outcasts. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we'll just. Oh no, we'll, we'll go and find White Pudding. He's still down here, right? You can negotiate on our behalf, Casey. He's collapsed the tunnels. We die of old age, and then he resurrects us, so we get to, you know... Live forever as necromancers. Yeah. Well, necromantic minions. Necromancies. Yeah. That's right. Um, however, reaching the final door, um, you, you don't even actually have to know. You just see that part of the wall panel has been removed, and there is a lever. Um, pulling it, the work wides open, and you are met immediately with a howling burst of cold air and snow begins to um, flurry into the room. There's howling wind outside. Um, I'm going to turn on the wind sound effect, and I need everyone to double check your audio to make sure that you can hear it. Bodies of all the villagers piled up outside the door that they're trying to get into. <laughs> Just frozen outside, having pounding on it. <laughs> Just right. desperate. It's gonna turn out we were down here for centuries. Yeah, I can hear it. Does it need to be pretty loud? You should be able to... Yeah, you should be able to hear the wind. Let me make sure I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. One sec. Can anyone not hear it? Okay. Um, yeah. Snow begins to flurry and pour into the room. You can hear howling wind outside. The, the harsh wind and cutting cold that you realize is certainly a blizzard. And a harsh one. And send your clothes whipping backwards, stinging your nose and your cheeks. What would you like to do? Casey uh, shields his face from the wind for a moment and um, moves his hands down into the side in a st distinct fashion and the wind moves from his face and also I think maybe the snow too as he uses this ability. Ooh, all right, yeah, snow seems to whip and twist as though somehow, just perhaps by happenstance, avoiding, avoiding casing. They weren't kidding about that storm. 
I mean, we're supposed to go to the stone tower next, right? I'm not sure we're going to get very far in this. Maybe we should just turn back around and have a nap with the gourds. Yeah, I can set up that mini wanderlust for us again if you want. We can have a, a good solid rest indoors, like. Well, the Fane, uh, yeah, Fane says. Is this a particularly uh, ba bad snowstorm, or is this the what you were expecting? Hey, these are heavy snows, but yeah, the tavern will be prepared. They'll have hot food and drink ready. Oh, we yes. Oh, and we haven't gotten to see anything else in your city, and... You know, hot food and real people would be nice. Yes. Stay close. I'll get us through. Uh, as they start to wander out really quickly, Ava checks the for weather forecast. <laughs> Using Druidcraft. She, she fiddles with a ham radio. <laughs> That's so cool! Yes. Yeah. <laughs> snows are coming. Heavy snows. This is one of the... As you look up, as you guys just begin to head out through the opening, buffeted with wind, maybe less if you're behind Casey, you see the thick, dark clouds above and just white all around. You realize this is... This is one of the... This is an uncharacteristically severe snowstorm. Uh... For this area, the worst you've even seen since the tower fell. The temperature itself seems to have maybe dropped an another 10, 10 degrees, maybe 20. It's a kind of cold that you feel biting your skin even through your winter clothing now. Um, My wet robes, this... I made mistakes! Casey, I made mistakes! Um, however... <laughs> I've heard, I've already clusters up around Casey for both the warmth and the wind. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> As you guys move through the front room of the Temple of Brunhilda that contains the statue of Herrera with her arms outstretched now, just half covered in snow, it's all flurried throughout the room, built up in the corners, you see just outside the temple facade itself, there's a figure standing there with heavy coat blowing in the wind there. They seem to, they're about the same height as Casey. Maybe a little thinner in the shoulders, bundled up tight. Um, you can see that they're wearing a hat that's being it's fluttering in the wind and kind of pressed against the side of their face. As you, as you emerge, the figure squints against the cold, calls out, Hey! You there! Are you Prosperina Pine? Yeah, that, that's me. I've got something for you. He reaches into his coat and pulls out a letter. Oh, no, Chris. Not a, a letter. Not, not back to the future. <laughs> oh, my God. Back to the future, Chris. I work is, is he, for the post and parcel. Dressed? I was going to say, is he dressed in the, in the navy blue uniform? I work for the post and parcel. We've had this letter in our possession in some form for 900 years. I thought maybe you could help us out with this. We were told to deliver it to this exact place at this exact time. That's me. You, you, you found me, uh, and the rest of us all too. And uh, she'll take the letter. What does it say? As you tear open the letter, you begin to to read frantically through the words. Oh, friends, it feels like a lifetime since I've seen you, and well, for me, I suppose it probably has been. I truly hope that this letter's found you all safe and sound, and that my retelling of your stories did your heroic deeds justice. I know some of you wouldn't call yourself that, but you are, each of you, heroes. I know in time, even if you never look in the mirror and see it, you'll understand who you are to those around you. 
there's so much I'd like to say, I need to say, but instead, I should tell you one last story. I don't know how or why, but I fell through what I can only assume was time itself and landed in total darkness. I fell a total of 1,019 years, three seasons, and 73 days to be precise. Turns out, paying attention to Gilgain's history lessons would be one of the best decisions I ever made. I've gazed upon the full moon and her shifting faces. I've defended myself against the ancient winged beasts that ravaged our homes before the founding of Lux. I've fought through battles that since childhood we've all known had already been won. I've warned those who would listen against the disasters to come and hopefully help prevent the worst parts. Brunhilda's hammer saved my life so many times I've lost count. I hope she can guide you in building a lasting peace and Lux again while breaking those who would sow hate and conflict within her borders. Kabeth, please use this warhammer to keep our people safe. Ishlan, please take Saloisa's spear. I hope you never have to use it. I'm certain you'll understand why. Esmond, wear this gauntlet. If anyone can figure out how it works, it's you. Rhea, Doc, I'd like you to have my potions in this ring. I trust you'll know when to use them. Casey, find Shalati. We owe her that, and when you do, give her this great sword. Peach. This drift globe got me through some very dark places. I hope it lights your way the way you light up the room for others. I've survived the group of kind-hearted dwarves and helped them establish a settlement that, if all goes as I hoped, will have greeted you upon your arrival. I've made my way to Shepherd's End, or at least where it will be. We built statues at the edge of town where we'll one day meet the East Fields. I've tried to provide what I can to change things for the better. And if at least one of them can be saved, then this would have all been worth it. I believe I've done all that I can here. It'll have been almost a thousand years until any of us are even born. That's still difficult to think about. I've thought carefully about what to do next, and as far as I know, there's only one person alive now who will still be alive in our time to help us. I'm going to find the Queen of Lux. No matter what happens next, remember who you are, where you came from. Remember not only who you have lost, but all those you've saved. Turns out the past needed me. The future needs you. Sal. A letter in your hand whips in the wind as you hold it and reach the, read the last words. Peach, uh... Slips it over, looks for more, uh, and then uh, folds it up. She'll look back at the courier and say, "This, you've had this for a thousand years." Some, some form or another, uh, post and parcel hasn't been around that long, but it, it was left with the locals and passed on to us. And well, there's been a little bit of a wager amongst those <laughs> in the post and parcel. And it looks like I lost. Yeah, well, you know, uh, can can you guide us in? Can you guide us into town? I feel like we've we got a mission to do, right? We gotta protect this place and every other place we can. We gotta make sure that this whole whole damn country of Lux, all of it, that we all have a future still. We owe it to Sal. Uh, the storm's a mighty one coming in. Best ahead to the tavern. I'm going there now. Lead on. And that's all. 
Um, and, um, well, let's say, let's say Peach read that out, but, um, which you, uh, you realize, I think immediately is the place that Salinger described building the statues, the place that would warn people about the coming danger. That's where the fighting stones were in Shepherd's End. And as you head off through the snow, clothes whipping in the wind, that's where we'll end for tonight. Ooh, this was so good, but I'm so sad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, so, yeah, Sean and I worked together, kind of, to, he wrote all of the poems. Um, so all of those, uh, yeah, were, were by him. I did a little bit of editing just for necessity, but... Yeah, and then then each of the each of the levels. That man talks to me every Saturday morning. How is the session? What you all do? He's known the whole time. You can yell at him tomorrow. He's a spy. Or either that, or you troll him and be like, "Yeah, you're pretty good. We took like I don't know, just took forever to get." Oh my god! Puzzle. Yeah, we took forever to get through the last puzzle. We didn't figure it out. No, no, <laughs> tell it'll be me next week. At the very end, we found a reliquary and had all of his items, and we took everything except the hammer. We couldn't bear to take that hammer, and so we left it. <laughs> At the end of it all, we just decided to do a long rest inside again, and we just went and made the mini, mini wanderlust one more time and delayed. No, gra grab the spear straight away. Hammer, couldn't see the point. I like to imagine as they're making their way through this storm. Peach has finished reading this letter, and as they're sort of like, the wind's whipping around and whatever, Ava's still got this globe in her hands, kind of just looking at it, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Peach just snatches it out of her hands. And <laughs> Mine. Let's, let's, let's pretend Peach read that out loud. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. In a perfect I'm... Salinger impression. Yes! I have the ability to unerringly mimic any voice or accent after hearing it for one minute. It's Ooh. a feat and also something I can do for real life. Perfect. Oh, I get true. That was but actually yeah, Kate I, on I the can't record. do it. Yeah, it was me the whole time. Actually, Sean doesn't exist. I've always played Salinger. Before that, I played Warbler. It really made the romance seem between yourself and yourself a little bit weird. Though. I think Silas has done it. <laughs> 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 <